Well, you know, it had to happen. I've had three back-to-back -back fantastic game experiences, and here we are looking at decision games, Wellington's victory. And the only thing Wellington's victory about Wellington's victory from decision games is the name. But we all knew that, right? We all knew that when we bought into it, and we all knew that when we started reading the rules uh, online, and we saw some of the playtest art and the draft art and the maps and all the rest of it. So we all knew we weren't getting a reboot of arguably the, a classic slash one of the best Napoleonic represent, uh, representations of Napoleonic combat, and in particular of the Waterloo Battle. You know, what's and all. It, just, it was a fun game. And maybe that's a lot of nostalgia talking for me, but there, hey, bygones. Here's what it is. So, uh, so why, am, why am I doing this video? Well, today, I, I thought I'd take a break from playing a G and Strike, because uh, that's like frying my brain. And I read these rules, you know, uh, I don't know, a month ago or whatever. I've had a, a photocopy of them out here, uh, printed out, and I've sort of edited up all the FAQs and all the errata that's come out since. And it, uh, while doing so, while rereading the rules with this little training scenario set up, found a small handful of other errors in the rules that are not mentioned anywhere yet. And, you know, I'm not, I like to try and work through things and then get on Board Game Geek and ask questions and do stuff so you kind of do it one time. Uh, because I, I've gone I'm past the days when I was trying to learn TCS and I'd ask, you know, 40 questions in uh, 20 minutes, right? As I ran backwards and forwards. So let's, let's talk about some of the good things that are going on here. Large hexes, nice. Pretty clean artwork. Uh, has some decent charts. You know, there's a good turn track chart with a good... Uh, uh, terrain chart on it and that's probably where it ends uh, the I have spent I spent the last hour looking for this combat effects noted on formation markers so if you're in line which is what this is or close formation or some other uh, square then you have a, a, a variety of effects uh, to your firepower shock you know how many dice you get and everything's kind of built around a number of dice you get to throw or d6s you get to throw and so i was looking at the rules for that not in the rules it's only on the chart and i i literally spent 30 minutes because i could have sworn i saw it in the rules and then i just happened to pick up this honking big chart and just by the way right who 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 makes who makes crap like this these days it's never mind let's not go there Someone made a design choice, and that's great. It's got a really big box, so let's you know make really big charts. That makes sense. Why, why pay for folds, man? I mean, folds cost more, right? Um, so I, th I solved that problem. Fantastic. Uh, I, I'm trying to work out if the cavalry, the leader with this cavalry that's charging here. And we'll talk about the charge marker in a second. That was another farce. It has this 2-2-2 two, two, two on it. <coughs> now, I, I've been going through the rules here again. And usually in the front of the rule book, you know, you have all the combat. Uh, that's just some extra errata that uh, they found before they shipped the game, I guess, or printed it. You've got all the different uh, item rule uh, blah, 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 blah. Counter types, color schemes. And then you've got uh, descriptions of forces, unit data, right? And that's it. Uh, if I want to find out exactly more detail about cavalry, I've got to go to the cavalry rules. I've got to go to the artillery rules for the artillery, for the range. i got to go to the leaders section for the leaders. Let's find leaders. Oh, no, it's not here. Nice big color examples. Oh, oh, oh by the way, this, this is, these are the rules for charge paths on this diagram. And this point here is repeated twice. And I'm still not exactly clear 
what has to happen? Do I have to end up in the hex or adjacent? Don't know. I believe it's adjacent. But if I look at these diagrams, these diagrams are a little misleading because you see this charge marker placed down and then maybe the unit is actually in that hex or is it back one? I'm not 100% certain, but maybe that is the case and as I look at it again. I think we actually put the charge marker on top of the unit and I'm not 100% certain whether or not I actually have to move my half my movement or all of my movement because of the comma here. Uh, where is it? Must move at least one hex, period. That's for, uh, I believe, you know, maybe that's for infantry, right? My maximum is half movement for infantry, half movement for infantry, okay. Uh, and full movement for cavalry. Okay, so so I think what that means is everybody has to move at least one hex, but you can move your full MA for cavalry and half. Okay, so that, that does make sense. So that's just me being fussy. There you go. I, mea culpa, sorry. Um, I'm looking for the leaders. The leaders are in here somewhere. Let's see. HQs. Oh, okay, here's a leader. Uh, that there's, oh, you, I don't know if you can see that, but there's the leader counter up there. It's a 222, it's got its command span on the top right hand side. Um, and now while I've got you here, I'm just seeing if I can find this. Yeah, it says you can add uh, the leader's morale bonus, but I don't know which factor is the morale bonus. I mean, they're all the same, that's, that's convenient, but there are some that have two one twos, some that have three one twos. Uh, so I don't know. And I, I've yet to find a diagram with uh, a, an explanation of that. So the hell with it. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm done for the day with this. I guess I'm gonna have to go get online and ask questions. I don't know what, I don't know, I don't know how this game would have ever been played without the internet because you can ask a question assuming we can get an answer now that said i will say the designer has been very responsive online i did go and look through some of the online comments and questions which of which there are um, many uh what's this designer's name yeah so frank davis a redesign and redevelopment chris Perello. um i'm glad you got thick skin man that's all I can say. Nice artwork and stuff, but uh, the, the way these rules are laid out, just, uh, the usability factor sucks. Uh, it, it, talk, it talks specifically about combat. All right, so you get to the rules on, where is, where, where is the rules? Where's the rest of the rules? You get to the rules on combat, and it says, uh, it's, yeah. it, uh, it says, uh, you know, combat is a section, right? One of these, these sections. Here it is, combat. Here's what you do when you go through combat. You initiate, you react, you fire, you shock, and, and then you do the terminal stage. Now, if I was laying these out, to me, these would all be a section of 14. But no, uh, the primary mode of uh, combat, apparently in this game, and apparently in Napoleonic war warfare, was musket fire. Who knew? Um, it's a full set of rules for 15 and they're not really rules they're, they're not, they, they are rules but you've got to read them in relation to this and then you're going to go to the shock rules and then you're going to go to the reaction rules and I really really have had a hard time and I know I'm tired today and a little weary, but um, I guess I'm gonna come back to this and we'll, we'll start again. Uh, not that we got very far, I got to the point where we had some units in front of someone to charge. And I, A, wasn't sure whether uh, reaction would allow me to reaction fire and change formation, or did I need to change formation in the command phase, which I think is what you actually have to do. And so that means then we just do reaction fire, and then we go to uh, then we go through that four-step process here, 
and we tally up a handful of dice and we roll them and then we uh, do some morale saves and, and stuff like that. So I've walked through some of this already, but uh, it's, it's really frustratingly uh, uh, inept, I think is one of the words I will use, and unfriendly to the user. Try and do stuff for people with average to below average intelligence. You know, we can't all be freaking rocket scientists and play your damn games. Yeah, later.